Hey everybody, it's Retro DM Ray here. Hey, uh, welcome to my channel. Um, I hope that you enjoy and you're encouraged in your gaming by this channel. So this episode, we are going to be talking about perhaps saving our game. If you would like to get a copy of what we're going to be reading through in some spots and what we're going to be covering on this channel from time to time, actually the majority of the time until we get it largely covered, um, which will be Moldvay's Basic or BX, as well as, of course, Expert, um, you can go here to Drive Through RPG and get your very own PDF copy. Um, for a very reasonable price for that PDF, I would encourage you to do so. You can have that in front of you and read along. If you are blessed to have your own hard copy, that's awesome. Follow along with me too as we talk about this game that I so dearly love, which is old school Dungeons and Dragons. So here we go. So First of all, let me say this. I'm, I'm going to be discussing my thoughts and my experiences here on this channel from over 40 years of playing tabletop role-playing games, and specifically Dungeons and Dragons. That's the game I absolutely love. So for today, I'm going to start by sharing my personal philosophy on this channel, as well as my school of thought, followed by just a little bit of my experiences and impressions regarding modern systems, and then I'm going to open with reading from the forward and the introduction of what I believe is the best version of Dungeons and Dragons, which of course, as I said earlier, is the Moldvay Basic and Expert set, or what is called BX. Okay, so first, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I started playing D&D &D with my cousin and his friends, and my two friends, in 1979. We were all largely avid Tolkien readers and savage sort of Conan readers, other types of folk pulp fiction type stuff, um, and doodlers while we were in study hall, of course. Uh, we didn't have video games, or if we did, they were the old school Pong, um, and we didn't have much more than about five TV channels, and we were about as green to role-playing as you could be. Our DM, my cousin, um, got the box set. He taught himself by reading through Moldvay, and so did we, and we were also learning it together by just playing it. It was a very great and imaginative time together as we got into this game that I so incredibly love. Um, within about a year, though, we'd switched to Advanced uh, Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition. And now there was nothing wrong with that, as I run today for my wife and kids, um, but uh, it started something in me looking back today that perhaps I regret, and we called it Rules Lawyering. It ruined many, many sessions, if you will, and it divided us as a group, um, as I think our words can do today, right? Um, so first of all, let me on a side note say this about words. Um, I believe that words really matter. I believe that there is such a thing as absolute truth. Um, and so I also want to tell you that although there are a lot of channels out there that are discussing BX or old school D&D or the old school revival or all those kinds of things, um, here on my channel, um, what we will not do is we will not ever use foul language on this channel. The reason why I want to do that is because I want this channel to be open to everyone to experience Dungeons and Dragons in all of its fullness and have great encouragement in it. And that means that words as we're going through do in fact matter. And my language that I use for those words is incredibly significant to me. And I want this to remain G-rated so that moms and dads can teach their kids, watch these videos, go through these videos, explain this to their children. Their children can watch it on their own and their you parents will have absolutely no objection as to what they're watching when they're going through these particular videos as I'm covering these particular topics and these particular things. I will also try to make sure I show never, no, never show any image that will be objectionable in any way and if I do provide a link in the description of any of these videos, um, if I believe that there's anything in there that would constitute a lack of G rating, I will make a warning note about that in the description so that you won't follow that link without first having knowledge um, about the rating that I believe that link might possess or a warning that the fact that that link may have some objectionable language or materials therein. All right, so now that we've done that, 
as I believe we should. Um, going forward, I do want to encourage you. I want you to be able to trust me that the content that we have in here is simply so that we can get back to encouraging one another and falling in love again with old school Dungeons and Dragons together. All right, so enough about that. Let's jump right into the, the intro right here. Um, and if you've got a PDF copy of Moldvay Basic, you can open that up to the forward. Um, if you don't, go to Drive Through RPG, as I said, and get yourself a PDF copy. Or if for some reason you are greatly blessed to have a hard copy, um, please go ahead and pull that out. And I will just go through a few things and, and read here for you from Moldvay's Basic, um, just the openings of what he has to say about the game of Dungeons and Dragons. So he starts out this way in his forward from December 3rd of 1980. Tom Moldvay says, I was busy rescuing the captured maiden when the dragon showed up. Fifty feet of scaled terror glared down at us with smoldering red eyes. Tendrils of smoke drifted out from between fangs larger than daggers. The dragon blocked the only exit from the cave. He goes on to say, Sometimes I forget that D&D fantasy adventure game is a game and not a novel I'm reading or a movie I'm watching. The original rules are a classic. They gave the first gaming system for fantasy role-playing um, and, in my opinion, are still the best set of rules on the market. When I revised the rules, I tried to maintain the spirit of the earlier rules. Those rules were written for people with a background of gaming experience, but this revision was designed to be easily read and used by individuals who have never before played a role-playing game. In the half dozen years since the original rules were published, the TSR staff has answered thousands of rules questions. The answers helped find problem areas in those rules, areas which could either stand minor improvements or were difficult for novice gamers to understand. This revision was aided not only by the collected gaming experience of TSR personnel, but by the gaming experience of the thousands of players and DMs who sent us letters in the mail. The D&D game has neither losers nor winners. It has only gamers who relish exercising their imagination. Let me stop there for a second. So if you'll notice something that he is saying here very, very clearly, and I just really, really love it. That's why I like this BX version of the game. Um, he says that they listened to the thousands of rules questions that they had um, and the problem areas that were noted and the things that could stay in improvement or were difficult for novice gamers to understand. Uh, but they did that because this revision, he says, was designed to be easily read and used by individuals who'd never before played a role-playing game. That's incredibly important. Although other editions say that they are a better entry for new players, I would argue that that better entry for new players is more built around the idea of today's uh, generation is video gamers. Um, and, and I think there's something lost there in that translation when you talk about the newer editions being a better entry point than these older editions. And I think there's something lost there because I think there's something lost in the fact that so many in today's generation, um, certainly the generations after mine, after 1979, um, certainly those generations uh, in many cases, not all, in, in many cases tend to read less, tend to, uh, tend to um, focus on what's on the page rather than, than what they imagine about what might could be on that page or what they imagine just from seeing an image like you have right here in front of you. What are the possibilities of the imagination that you could have just by staring longingly or deeply at this image over time? This was something that I would stare at all the time on the cover of that box set and, and the cover of that book and I would just imagine myself being there as that warrior with the shield on the bottom or that 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 sorceress, although a sorcerer in my case, or wizard, was, was standing there getting ready to, to assist her warrior friend in the defeat of that lake monster or that lake dragon. And what, what was it like up at the top of those stairs and, and those types of things. So I want to encourage you that um, Moldvay Basic here um, takes us back to that. Um, and I think his, his background and what he's writing this revision for is, is quite incredible. He goes on to say in the, the fourth paragraph, the players and the DM share in creating adventures in fantastic lands. And here's a key. They not only share in creating adventures, uh, the DM is not against you, the players are not against the DM, but they share in creating adventures and it's in fantastic lands where, quote, heroes abound and magic really works. 
Heroes abound and magic really works. Um, I think a lot of that's kind of lost in translation today too from the fact that, oh, you can just you can just play whatever you want and you can play whatever alignment that you want to and everything's on the table so it's all even, it's all leveled. There are no really truly good guys and, and evil guys can be good guys and, and, and neutral guys that don't pick a side can also be heroes. And, and there's something to be said for the fact that this, this was written so that heroes might abound or might be plentiful and, and, and at the forefront. Um, he says, in a sense, the D&D game has no rules, only suggestions. No rule is inviolate, particular if a new or altered rule will encourage creativity and imagination. That is so incredibly huge. No rule is inviolate, particular if a new or altered rule will encourage creativity and imagination. The important thing is to enjoy the adventure. He says, I unwrapped the sword which the mysterious cleric had given me. The sword was golden tinted steel. Its hilt was set with rainbow collections of precious gems. I shouted my battle cry and charged. My charge caught the dragon by surprise. Its titanic jaws snapped shut inches from my face. I swung the golden sword with both arms. The sword blade bit into the dragon's neck and continued through to the other side. With an earth-shaking crash, the dragon dropped dead at my feet. The magic sword had saved my life and ended the reign of the dragon tyrant. The countryside was freed, and I could return as a hero. Tom Mulday, 3 December. 1980. What he's describing for us here is so incredibly imaginative, so incredibly creative, so, so something that you can just latch onto in your mind and, and you can go to bed sleeping at night and dreaming about having these kinds of adventures, um, extending yourself in these particular ways and enjoying that creative, imaginative play in that particular nature, not looking at a sheet I mean, many in today's versions, I mean, not to bash them, I've played them. I've played 5th uh, edition, I've played Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2nd edition, I've played other games throughout my 40 plus years. Um, just, just, the this older edition, it just, it left um, everything to your imagination. There was practically nothing on your sheet. And today the sheets are like multifaceted catalogs of, of things that you have to write down and, and things which... To me, there's so much on the sheet that it leaves nothing to my imagination. I can simply look on the sheet, and in fact, the sheet tells me what I can and cannot do. I have boundaries. I'm, I'm boxed in, if you will, in regards to my level of play and my level of player skill versus sheet-driven skill. Um, I just think it's so incredibly important that um, in 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 going back to old school, our reasoning for that and my reasoning for that as a, a dungeon master of 40 plus years of experience was just to come to the realization that limits are important. Limitations are so incredibly important because those limitations of something that's on the sheet doesn't limit how you then play and imagine that outside of the sheet. I don't have to have everything on there to let me just go absolutely wild with my imagination to be able to create or craft something like you saw from Conan in the Savage Sword of Conan or something that you saw um, in some of the old, really, really old school Dungeons and Dragons types of movies or the Pulp Fiction, um, those types of things. Those, those limitations are incredibly significant. You don't want to flatten everything so that everything becomes the same. Um, I think that's so incredibly significant in today's games. I hope that um, this is an encouragement to you as we're going through this. I want to read you one last thing before we close today's short video um, about what Mr. Moldvay has to say in regards to this booklet of basic Dungeons and Dragons. Here's what he says. While the material in this booklet is referred to as rules, that is not really correct. Anything in this booklet and other D&D booklets should be thought of as changeable. Anything, that is, the dungeon master or referee thinks should be changed. This is not to say that everything in this booklet should be discarded. So, for example, you wouldn't play Trivial Pursuit 
um, without a board and the pieces, or it wouldn't be Trivial Pursuit, it would just be trivia. The pursuit is kind of required. But he says, all of this material has been carefully thought out and play tested, so you're not going to discard it all. However, if after playing these rules as written for a while, you and your referee, the dungeon master, think that something should be changed, first to think about how the changes will affect the game, and then go ahead. The purpose of these rules, quote unquote, is to provide guidelines that enable you to play and have fun. So don't feel absolutely bound to them. I think mechanics and systems and more and more and more and more and more materials can be so binding. Even when they say, these are only guidelines, these are only suggestions, here's other alternative ways to do it. All of that voluminous amount of material actually makes you feel like you must abide by it. And certainly there are things in here that you would want to abide by for purposes of game balance, for purposes of game play, but ultimately it's the dungeon master who's not an adversary. He's making rulings, not rules. And you're working together with him as you're crafting or creating this beautiful story that will, these rules, these guidelines are going to enable you to play and have fun and do that. So don't feel absolutely bound to them, as he says. I think that is so incredibly important. I hope that as we start this adventure together, as I start reading through this book with you and, and hitting some of the various different highlights and the different aspects of it, of the BX system that I just dearly love and am playing with my family today, I hope that this is something that encourages you. Um, I hope that you will take a an opportunity to... Uh, to like this channel, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to do that, uh, check on notifications, make sure you activate all of those so that we can we can walk down this memory lane together and, and uh, you don't miss any of the times when I post some new videos. Um, I hope if you like it, share it with your friends, certainly with all of your family, family comment and let me know what you think. Um, ultimately, I'm trying to build, or I should say rebuild, a true old school community together with you. So um, thanks for listening. Thanks again for taking your time to be here with me. Again, my name is Retro DM Ray, and may all of your games be fun and all of your roles be nat 20s.